Okay, so the reason that Mrs. Crouch and myself are here today is to talk to you about Infinite Scholars Program and what other, and to ensure that you're prepared to attend the Infinite Scholars Program. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. I'm certain that many of you may have heard this cliche before, but it's more than a cliche. It truly is a fact that if you properly prepare, it will prevent poor performance. So what is Infinite Scholars? Infinite Scholars is a free college scholarship event and it'll be held Wednesday, October 14th, 2020, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. In the past, this has been a in-person event where you would come and bring uh, resumes and have an opportunity to talk to uh, colleges and universities about the programs that they offer, as well as an opportunity to receive scholarships and just understand where you are now in this unprecedented time of COVID-19, we've had to move this program virtually. What? Oh, you're going to it. Go ahead. <laughs> what's in it for you? Why should you, what's in Infinite Scholars for you? And so I'll just start with um, on-site admissions into college. You know, here for juniors and seniors, for seniors, you're in the beginning of the school year. To be accepted into multiple colleges, you serve multiple purposes. It, you know, whether it's a college you really want to go to or not, to actually be accepted is great motivation to understand how great you really are, despite what you may think. You know, oh, I just do this, this is every day, you know, my grades have always been good. It really is motivating. Um, I, I will just tell you a quick story of an in-person event that happened last year during Infinite Scholars. The, um, there was a young lady who just happened to strike a conversation and say, you know, I'm not sure really what I'm going to do after school. It was senior year. You know, I, I've been at it a long time, not really sure if I'm going to go to college, if I'm going to stay home, go to community college. Well, I said, you're already out of no. Go ahead and give it your best shot. She walked through the room and had those conversations with multiple colleges and universities. She received many different on-site admissions, received many different scholarships. She was blown over the moon about this. It was so motivating to her. So to have that experience, even if whether you know that you're already set up and you know what school you want to go to, this is a can be an extra nudge for you to say, you know what, I am just as spectacular as people say that I am, or just as spectacular as I know that I am. Interview experience. Having the one-on-one -on -one sessions with the recruiters <laughs> in this virtual uh, setting will give you interview experience, whether you choose to go to one of the schools offered or not. Potential full ride scholarships. People were receiving full ride scholarships, multiple, multiple full ride scholarships from many different universities that are there. And even additional scholarship money from other colleges and universities. So ultimately, the motivation to keep doing well in school and to finish strong for those juniors and seniors, for those who are in ninth, tenth grade who say, you know, I've got a while. I, I don't have to focus on that right now. It's important for you to see what is expected in order to receive those full ride scholarships, to receive those admission letters, to see what that is possible and to see what it takes to have on your resume. What does your, uh, <laughs> excuse me, letters, what should your uh, letters look like? Exposure to possible, the exposure to these possibilities in your post high school career are endless at this event. And, and to let, I'm just gonna um, jump in for a bit to say, this program um, is so awesome because it's really all about 
um, doing what the Capital League does for you guys. It's about providing you opportunities. So often, um, you know, in our lives, we don't always get exposure to, we don't always have access to opportunities. The great thing about Infinite Scholars is it's actually designed for students uh, and it's designed to help you win. It's designed to help you succeed. There is virtually no one who could participate in this event that wouldn't really walk away with some type of college opportunity um, admissions. It is not just for kids who have a 3-7 or a 4-0. Um, and the, one of the, the most amazing things is uh, you learn from the admissions officers what you need to do to, to be successful. Uh, but this is really about helping you win and helping you uh, succeed. And so the, the real, one of the real advantages about this program is applying for college can be so stressful, right? It requires so much. So one of the things about this is that you really have the opportunity uh, to meet with many colleges in a one-on-one -on -one session who will uh, either walk you through the process or will let you know on the spot whether or not you've made it, relieving just, you know, weeks of wait and some of the other things. So this is something we definitely, definitely want you guys to do and to, to think about. And for folks like uh, RJ, and I can't remember who else participated last year, you know, those folks can tell you just um, how awesome the program was because they walked in, similar to what Miss Kitchen was saying, nervous, and they walked out just surprised with, um, you know, uh, those, those college acceptances. Thank you. I totally agree. So how should you prepare now until then? So the date is October 14th. Where should you start? Well, start by preparing a resume if you don't already have one. Update the resume that you do have. Write essays. Market yourself. Think about how you want to market yourself. And I know we think oftentimes, you know, I don't do much, I don't have this, I don't have that. The things that you do truly are important and they are great. Everything that I heard today in the part of the meeting that I was in was phenomenal. Standardized tests, and I know that that's an area that may or may not be weighed as heavily as it has in the past due to some of the legislative uh, choices that are being taken right now, but ensure you include correct information on the right essays. And Ms. Crouch, did you want to speak to standardized testing? Yeah, I mean, so a number of the schools this year um, aren't, uh, are being flexible in terms of whether or not um, you have to provide standardized test scores. Just because of, you know, COVID-19, a lot of uh, juniors, uh, a lot of seniors who were juniors last year didn't have the opportunity to take a uh, standardized test. Um, and then even, you know, as we've gotten into the more recent environment, still many of the ACT, SAT test sites are still canceling. So schools understand that. And so the fact that you have not taken one should not stop you from participating. Schools are going to actually this year focus much more on the whole individual, which actually is the right thing to do because you are more than your test scores anyway. Uh, but for those of you who have them, maybe you took them sophomore year, um, you know, it's always good to, to uh, still have them. But the absence of, uh, of, of the standardized test score should not be a deterrent to you participating. Most of the schools um, are expecting that many of the seniors will not have the test scores. And so don't let that stop you from participating. Absolutely. And so where, where do you finish? You know, okay, I have my resume. I've been writing essays. I, I actually have a few essays. You know, I know how I want to market myself. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. Practice answering questions out loud confidently. Be sure to edit and double check all documents you plan to submit. Establish an accountability partner. And so whether it's your uh, 
senior mentors here within Kappa League, a teacher, a counselor, appoint someone to keep you accountable for what you plan to do and how you plan to organize yourself and market yourself for Infinite Scholars. Know that you are good enough. Everything that you do, you are greatness. And, and we go back to just one thing, um, Ms. Kitchen. And this is the other thing that I will certainly put out um, to the Capital League. I certainly have no issue reviewing essays or helping students, um, you know, draft essays. That's something I do with our Jack and Jill teams all the time. I've done it with two kids now, um, as well as Ms. Kitchen. So I do this pretty regularly. So certainly I'm more than happy to help any student who needs to um, figure out how do I draft a good essay or even, you know, review some essays. So I'll throw that out there to you guys, just, you know, uh, as you work with the kids. Um, you know, if they, if they need someone to take a look at it or someone to work with them one-on-one, -on -one, absolutely can do that. Absolutely. Utilize your resources and we are here for you. So we've talked about, for those who have attended in the past, that this year it's going to be virtual. There will be a video library of colleges. You'll get contact information to connect directly to a recruiter where they can set up a one-on-one -on -one interview session. So this will be slightly different from what anyone who has attended in the past have experienced. You know, you would in person have a table and there's a line and you'll, you, you would talk with the recruiter, but there's a line behind you. So you may not have as much time as you like to market yourself or to have those conversations. You know, you would take a card and perhaps uh, touch base at a later time to get additional questions answered as to how you may want to uh, improve in a certain area or, you know, whatever follow-up information is requested. This time, having an opportunity of a one-on-one -on -one interview session with a recruiter in a virtual setting on a phone, that it's just you and them. And, and while they may have a time limit, it, it really is an opportunity for you to sell who you are. You know, market yourself as the great young men that you know you are. In this one-on-one -on -one interview, students will be shown how to access the college video library and can begin watching videos of various colleges and universities. Um, students will have the opportunity to receive admission and scholarship offers. And so out of those one-on-one -on -one interviews, on-site admissions, you know, you know at the top of your senior year, you've been accepted to X number of schools. How much more motivating can that be? You are great and it, it motivates you to continue to do even greater things throughout the rest of your senior year. And for those ninth, 10th and 11th graders, it motivates you to stay on the right track. A few, few classes you may wanna take, a few classes you may wanna focus on in order to get what it is that you want. Brand yourself. We're talking about market, marketing yourself. Well, when you think about marketing, most people think about a product. But you are a young man of great standard. Brand yourself. You know, in your essay, what makes a good essay? And we, we've included a sample. But you think about all of your great characteristics, your skill sets, the experiences that you've had be it even in the entrepreneurial setting. I've heard the young gentleman with uh, mitten kicks, you know, that, that's such a phenomenal story. How do you write that in an essay? Getting your letters of recommendation from your teachers, your coaches, your Kappa League mentors. Getting those early. Your resume, summary of your activities. So for those of you who, have, who may not have, underclassmen who may not have a resume to date, you know, just start by writing it down. How do you start? You know, where do you get, how do you get your transcript? And again, we've talked about those SAT and ACT scores, how they may be a great area, you know, and it's understood by the colleges and universities that most children don't have that. <laughs> And let me say one thing um, on a few of these things. 
So your letter of recommendation, um, particularly for seniors, whether it's at Infinite Scholars or as part of your college application are pretty critical. Make sure that you ask someone who knows you to write your letter of recommendation. And I think it's okay to ask folks to provide you a copy of what they wrote about you as well. But I think asking even your Kappa um, um, lead advisors and mentors to write letters um, are phenomenal. I will tell you my son who was in Kappa League, one of the best letters of recommendation he had came from Mr. King. And I heard schools talk about that letter of recommendation over and over, but it was because Mr. King knew him um, from Kappa League and it came off personal and people felt like that was something, uh, that this was someone who knew them. So when you think about who can write your letter of recommendation, uh, it doesn't just have to be a teacher. Some, some schools will ask for a uh, teacher, but just make sure that it's someone who, who knows you. And even if you only need one, it's sometimes okay to ask for two or three. That way you can kind of take a look and <laughs> see who might be the um, best one. And then we did provide, um, we do have some sample resume and summary of activity sheets that we can um, give you. And then with your essay, just make sure with your essay, you're always telling a story that highlights who you are. And so you may think, well, I don't really know, um, you know, how to do that. But that's where, you know, um, you can do things like write down certain things like, what have I achieved? What do I want people to know about me? What have been some of the biggest incidents in my um, life today? Um, you know, what, what have I accomplished, you know? But this is where folks can also sit down with you and help you tell, tell a story. Absolutely. And our next slide is getting resume ready, getting your resume ready. For those of you who have one, how to doctor it up. And for those of you who may not have thought that, oh my goodness, I'm just in high school. Do I really need a resume? Absolutely. We've included a sample and we will send it in a Word document as well for to circulate throughout the group but ensure you capture it all. Don't downplay, you know, your Boy Scout experience. List everything you do just to get it out and then go back in and edit. Youth Usher, I heard uh, one of my uh, Triumph children say, you know, what you may think is regular to you and you just do it because your parents tell you to is extraordinary on paper once you list it, but you have to get it out there. Be able to speak to everything that you list. You know, once you get it all out there, then you decide, okay, what should stay, what, what needs to go, if anything. Again, we'll provide this slide deck as well as a copy of the sample resume. So what do you say in an essay? I write enough essays in high school, right? I, I don't want to write an essay about myself. How interesting could that be? You know, this is a sample of why I want to go to college. Something more than, you know, because my parents said I had to, or because that's the only way I know I can you know, make, have a decent career. It, be sure to include factual information. Be yourself because yourself, you are good enough. And, and I can't reiterate that enough. Prepare to wow the recruiter in your essay. So once you get it all down, analyze and decide what's, what's staying, what's going. You know, nobody knows you better than yourself. And being self-aware is the most powerful thing that you have as a human. What makes you unique? You know, you, Xavier, you're nothing like Tyson. Even if you guys like the same thing, what makes you unique? Those are some of the things that you want to focus on in your essay and in your conversations with the recruiters. In your interview, you reiterate what you've, you know, what your essay says, why you're interested in the specific school. 
or why you never even heard of this specific school? You know, and what, what, what drew you to that? Was it the location? You know, what area of study you may want to go into? Why, should, why would you be an asset to that school? What makes you great? So you talk about your leadership skills and how you um, created an entrepreneurial avenue for yourself and how you step up and be the leader in uh, with Naviance in your Kappa League group. You talk about those different stories and thoughts that seem so regular to you. Focus on who you are as an individual. And these are ways to market yourself. Say what makes you unique. Say what you like most about yourself. And if nobody else likes you, you should like yourself. You know, what, what more than, you know, you like the fact that you don't meet strangers. You're able to conversate with anyone. You like your leadership skills. Talk about yourself. Have that unique, authentic experience. And then uh, lastly, ask questions about the school. It can be a school that you really want to know more about, or you think you may know everything about it, but I'm certain that there is something about the programs that they offer that you may not know. So be sure to ask questions about the school that you're at. And, and one thing I just want to add to this is sometimes it can be um, intimidating when we talk about leadership, right? Um, but the one thing that I want to stress is leadership, particularly at colleges, look at it, it's not just about the title. Absolutely. Leadership is about a behavior. It's, you know, certain things that you may not even think of as leadership. Um, did, you, did you have to take care of your younger brother or sister while your parents work? Did you, you know, who, did you have a, uh, a, a younger uh, student that you mentored? Did you, you know, stop someone from being bullied? See, that's what I mean when I say think about the different things um, that you've done. And a lot of times when we say leadership, we think of, oh, you know, I was president of Jack and Jill, or I was, or I was vice president of this. But a lot of times the colleges are asking you about leadership, not just because they want to know your involvement, but they want to know your characteristics and your, the traits that you possess. And so, you know, that's, this is sort of the things that I talk to students about, which um, are, like, tell me a little bit about yourself. What makes you unique? What makes you special? Tell me just some things that you've done in your life. Help me understand you because there are many things that we can turn into a leadership um, trait or make a leadership school a uh, 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 skill that colleges uh, will will look at. Because sometimes, believe it or not, a college may want someone more who uh, only experiences that they have had to babysit a brother or a younger brother or sister uh, while their parents work because it says a few things about that kid. This is the kid who, you know, is obedient. This is a kid who understands family dynamic and working with a team. This is someone who is compassionate. This is someone who understands the importance of getting others through. And so this is what I mean when I talk about how we brand you or how you market yourself. There is, there is something in your life that we can find that can make the case for you. But I wanted to say that because oftentimes when we think about leadership, we look to positions. And I want you to understand that leadership is a behavior. So think about your behaviors that would show you're a great leader. Absolutely. Great points, Ms. Scott. So that is the end of the presentation. We would like to open it up for questions and or comments to the group. Uh, I have a few questions. Go ahead, Austin. Okay. Um, so for when you have these like one-on-one -on -one, like type of things with admission people, do we... Um, do you have to pay for like admission prices? I know when you apply to school, like oh, online, you have to pay to like apply to the school. Is that the case in this situation too? So I do. Go ahead, to Well, So I do know that oftentimes admissions are waived. 
with a lot of the schools that attend Infinite Scholars? Not all of them will do it, but the majority will waive them uh, for you. That's, that's actually one of the advantages of participating in Infinite Scholars is because they're sort of doing on-site admissions. And so many of them, even in the virtual space, have agreed to waive the admissions fee. Not all of them, but many of them have. So that's an excellent question, Austin. All right, and also for like our essays, I know some schools have like certain essay topics, but in like in your presentation, it was kind of more of a broad essay sense. So like for when we're like one, if we go to like a one-on-one -on -one session, should we bring a certain essay to them or should we just like kind of bring our favorite essay that we can write ourselves? So the essay topic for infinite scholars is why I want to go to college. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but let me tell you this, and you asked the really good question. So this is me. I would, you know, if you have another essay that you have, I always bring back up, right? <laughs> you know, because it never helps to have too, you know, too much. Who knows what they'll ask? But, but for infinite scholars, the essay question is actually, why do I want to go to college? All right, and my last question <laughs> is. Um, for, I, I know you guys said that there's like a library of the schools that are going to be like attending. So how do we get like the list of the schools that are going? Yeah, I think um, um, I can probably get a list. Uh, they open it up to you after the, um, the session and then you're able to, to see. Uh, typically in the past, let me tell you, I can kind of tell you who in the past has attended and they'll probably uh, uh, still be there. In the past, we've had like Florida A&M, uh, Wayne um, State, uh, Grand Valley, uh, Tuskegee. Tuskegee, many of the HBCUs, I'm trying to think. Alcorn. Alcorn, um, Alabama A&M. Many of the Michigan universities will uh, be, you know, usually attend um, and then sometimes you may have like a Washington University uh, and the like. Central Michigan is one who usually uh, is there. But many of the Michigan schools you can expect. But, you know, we, I can tell you, like University of Michigan, um, Ann Arbor won't do on-site um, um, admission, mm -hmm. but University of Michigan, they're born, does. And so there will be some schools here that that won't do on-site admissions, but the majority will. Okay. But I can check into getting, see if, if I can get a list uh, and provide that to you, Mr. Bradley, and you can share. Great questions, Austin, thank you. Yeah, yeah no and, the, and I was gonna say the good thing, let me tell you another good thing to your point, Austin, is typically when we do the infinite scholars in person, maybe 40, 40 colleges come because they're constrained by, you know, travel budgets and the like. The beautiful thing about the virtual program is now you can take advantage of on-site admissions for a school that, for a college that may not come to our particular area, right? Mm -hmm. so, so maybe, for example, University of Alabama doesn't come to, uh, Kent, Michigan, because they know that 90% of their kids come from the state of Alabama. And so now with that virtual, uh, with it being virtual, this is one of the advantages. You can actually, if you're interested in schools in other states that don't typically come to our in-person conference, you can actually schedule one-on-ones with them and take advantage of on-site admissions for those schools as well. Okay, thank you. Awesome, any other questions? I have a question. Uh, it seems to me that in the past there have been um, juniors that have been admitted uh, in this process and receive uh, scholarships. And uh, can you talk about your experience with that? Yeah, so in the past, uh, last year and the year before, I know that there are two schools that actually did um, uh, do on-site admissions for juniors. Um, and so uh, as long as, I mean, they were contingent offers as long as the juniors kept up their grades and, and, and maintained it. But yes, um, there, there, there are some schools that will do it for, um, for juniors. 
I will say the overwhelming majority are definitely seniors, but um, there, there are a few that will do it for juniors. Mm -hmm. But I think to Ms. Kitchen's point and the point that I think you're making um, is, you know, even though it's geared towards seniors, it really is good for freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, um, particularly juniors, to kind of go look around um, and see just kind of what types of things would be expected of them because you have the advantage that seniors don't, which is you have a whole year to prepare and uh, get it to, and figure out, um, you know, what it is. So if you know, for example, you want to go to Hampton, you can learn what Hampton's requirements are and you can learn what Hampton's requirements are in order to get scholarships. And so that gives you a year of knowledge ahead right before you have to do it. If not three years for the freshmen. I yeah. will tell you, I brought my seventh grader last year just to have the experience in person to see how many people and, and what the what the experience looks like to stand nearby when they're having their those one-on-one -on -one conversations. And for some of the juniors and seniors who were receiving those scholarships and those on-site admissions, asking if they, she asked if she could have a copy of their resume just to read through it and to set her mind on what it will take. So it's never too early. Any other questions? How do you, how, one, one last one, what, how do you uh, talk to students about how they should structure their their college uh, admission or application uh, sites in the sense of how many schools do do you know do people uh, apply to, but also I mean I, I know that uh, some people uh, look at two or three schools that they might have a pretty poor chance of getting into, but if they did get into it and had enough money, they would love to go. And and rather than not applying, they they apply to them as kind of stretched schools. Uh, separate from the ones that they have a pretty good idea they can get into because they know they have all the requirements. How do you talk to students about that? So I will say um, the experience that I've had with Infinite Scholars, you know, while there are schools there that, you know, there are a lot of schools there that I had never even heard of. So going to the, just standing in line to hear about their school. No, I'm not interested in this Baptist college somewhere. But when they offer you an on-site admission, you're like, wow, oh, really? I'm that great, huh? You know, so not to limit oneself. I, I think, you know, having your stretch schools, um, having your focus areas, that's, that's very important. However, you know, here you're going to, your focus school, your number one choice, you got in, but then you've got this school over here that you didn't hear about until last year. They're going to give you a full ride, you know, so having opportunities. And Mrs. Crouch mentioned something earlier just about that's what this program is about, is providing those opportunities. So why wouldn't you set yourself up to have options and to canvas all of those opportunities that are set before you? So I kind of do two things uh, when I talk to um, students, and in the, and I've done this with my own children. <laughs> I've done it, I've done it twice before. So I always ask my kids to have ten to twelve schools that they're interested in, three easy schools that they know they they won't have any problems getting in. You know, three likely schools that um, it's not a sure thing, but they have a a more likely the not chance of getting in and then I always tell them to have three stretch schools like you know three three schools that are really stretched for them um, to you know to look at and I, I have them do that and I say this because for uh, to students for a variety of reasons I think it's interesting I think it's important I shouldn't even say interesting I think it's important for students to see the difference and what schools are requiring I think that's that's one thing. I think it's important for students to to understand uh, uh, the the distinction uh, with the schools. Um, and 
I think it's important for them to have safe schools so that they always have a school that they know they can get in. But I also think like anything in life, it's important for them to stretch themselves. And so they should have those stretch schools. Now on the off chance that they get into their stretch school, that's great, uh, that's, that's phenomenal. And if they don't, I think it's important for them to understand maybe what, why they also didn't because that's room for improvement. And in terms of the money, what I always uh, also tell students is don't let money determine what schools you apply for. Money may determine at the end what school you go to, but it should not determine what schools you apply to. Because you would be surprised at, uh, at how willing, in general, colleges are to work with you. And so the example that, that, that we use sometimes is this, and we just, we just had this happen even with us. And so, you know, my son's top school was he wanted to go to Michigan State. But Michigan State is known as a school that doesn't really give money. But he got a full ride to Ohio State. And so that's where he was going to go. And then he just happened to mention one day, um, yeah, I'll go, but I would really, my, my top choice is Michigan State. And I'm not kidding when I say we called them up and told them that he really wanted to go to Michigan State, but they offered us no, no real money. And so we had to go to the school that gave us a full ride and they offered him a counter offer. And so we ended up going to, to Michigan State but what happens a lot of times is our kids don't know that they sometimes can negotiate. Sometimes schools are looking for certain things. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, there are other uh, scholarship opportunities that can make those things possible. So what students, I always say to students is don't let money dictate what school you apply to. Although it certainly may be a factor in where you end up going, but the important part is to apply, and then we can, you can always see about uh, if there are finances that will allow that to be uh, possible for you. But under all circumstances, I always say a list of 10 schools, 10 to 12 schools, three easy, three more likely than not, and three stretch. Did they want to see uh, that Ohio State offer yeah. in uh, writing? They surely okay. did it. <laughs> Is that sure something that did. happens? <laughs> no hustles is that here. That happens? No, no, is that no, something they, that happens? Is that something that happens frequently? Because I've never heard of that. Yeah, so most people don't know about it. So here, right. and, and, and I used to hear people tell me that and I didn't believe it. But in our case, what happened is it came together in three hours. I kid you not. So what, wow. happened, yeah. so what happened is uh, Justin got accepted into what's called the Social Science Scholars Program. And they really liked him. And so he told them that he just, he couldn't go. He couldn't justify paying, you know, $28,000 um, when Ohio State had given him a full ride. And it was a full ride with not just room and board. It was books, computers. It was everything, wow. right? Wow. Right. So what we did was the, the uh, professor asked for a copy of the letter. We sent the copy of the letter. The professor went to the dean of the uh, social science program and said, this is the student we want here. This is an African-American student, you know, with a pretty high GPA, great ACT scores, uh, involvement in everything, and he's the Eagle Scout. And he said, this is the type of kid that we really need here. The dean then called the, uh, under, the head of the uh, undergraduate admissions, who then called Justin on the phone. And he asked Justin, what would it take to get here? And what was interesting, and this is what I would say to you guys, this is where you have to brand yourself. So the guy, so the head of undergraduate admission said to Justin, he said, what is it going to take to get you here? And it better not be a lot, because otherwise I'm going to tell you, good luck at Ohio State. So Justin said, well, it needs to be a, a full ride, because that's what I already have. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Wow! And, and it, confident. And, and he said, "My mom is not going to let me take anything less than what I already have." Oh, and so, it on you, <laughs> right? Yeah, he did. But and that's what you can do sometimes, right? And so the guy said, "Well, let me think about it, and I'll call you back." 
and he called us back and that's what he did. Fantastic. It is a fantastic thing and it does happen more often than not. And just a quick similar story, my best friend's daughter, U of M, full ride. Michigan State just admitted. Meanwhile, her aunt and her mom were both Michigan State grads. The similar situation. They went to the dean and within three to six hours, she had a full ride at Michigan State and that's where she's thriving at today as a sophomore or junior. That's incredible. I've never heard that. They just don't tell our kids. I mean, yeah. they don't tell kids in general. Um, and I mean, I know for us, they had they cobbled together um, uh, endowments, right, mm -hmm. um, um, to, to do that. But they don't necessarily tell you that. But that's why I always say to kids, don't let uh, uh, cost be uh, a reason why you don't apply. Right. Absolutely. But even even say you don't have that scenario, there may be alumni you can tap into. There may be local organizations, Rotary, mm -hmm. other other um, you know things. It, but it may ultimately come down to a cost decision. Uh, but I just I tell try to tell students not to let that be uh, a factor in what schools they select. Provided, though, that they have those EV schools and more uh, likely than not schools. So, so certainly, we'd like to thank Mrs. Crouch and Mrs. Kitchen for sharing Amen. this valuable information for us today. Amen. Uh, Amen. For our Capital Leaguers, uh, this is really valuable information.